one of the things that I prefer in the process to, to do film is not only um, uh, create a story on screen, uh, direct the actors, and the, but it's also all the little details. Um, I'm, I'm, I can say I'm, I'm, I'm certainly a, a huge fetichist, <laughs> and uh, I like to, to keep an eye on everything. Um, the, the clothes and, and the color of the of a, a wall behind the you know the, the character everything everything for me is important and uh, when I do film like uh, Silent Hill uh, or uh, Beauty and the Beast what I like my great pleasure is to recompose the world uh, recompose everything from the from the map from the materials to uh, the light and of course when you do uh, something like a fairy tale like Beauty and the Beast you have the it, it's very easy to sell to a producer okay we are going to shoot the film entirely on stage and everything is going to be done in post-production and uh, I used plenty of special effects in uh, Silent Hill but Silent Hill was still somewhere a very traditional movie there was plenty of sets plenty of, uh, of uh, build set. But on, on Beauty and the Beast, I decide to cross the line and go to something which is uh, a pure uh, synthetic movie on screen. Also because in the meanwhile, I have been blown away by um, Avatar. Uh, Avatar for me was uh, such a shock that uh, I stay at my home during one week just to try to figure what, what I have seen. Um, it's not, it was not the first special effects movie, but somewhere it was a movie for me which was opening the new century of cinema. Uh, suddenly I realized by seeing uh, Avatar that uh, uh, the period where it was important to take his camera to to different country, to place in the world where nobody went, was over. But now the camera was turning from here to there, inside the brain of the director. And, and I realized that uh, now what the landscape that the people want to see are imaginative landscape. Uh, landscape that you can only create in your brain and then through CGI. And uh, suddenly, you know, it, it, when you start to think about that, it opened a, a, a full world of uh, new experimentation in cinema. But in the same time, I have the feeling that by doing that, in a way, you come back to the origin of the cinema. You come back to the period where a guy like Fritz Lang was doing Metropolis and Nibelungen and was recreating everything. So somewhere it's, it's very interesting to think that a movie like Beauty and the Beast can be very, very primitive and in the same time very, very uh, technological in the same way. And me, as a, a guy who loves films, who loves old films, it's very, uh, it's very exciting to think that the, the old cinema is not dead but is, is going to be reborn through the new technology. I hope that the people who, 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 uh, who will go to see uh, Beauty and the Beast will go to see the film with the same excitement than, for example, the people in '46 when they went to see uh, the film of Cocteau, knowing that Cocteau uh, has done very strange uh, visual and imagery. You know, uh, I hope that the people will kind of wonder, you know, by seeing the film.